acquittal of uh, Bradley Manning. We'll have more reaction to that, of course, in our programming here throughout uh, France 24 throughout this uh, evening. Welcome then to the uh, France 24 debate. The first word on the health and safekeeping of Mohamed Morsi has been had. The EU's representative on foreign policy, Catherine Ashton, held a two-hour discussion with the deposed president. The meeting took place at an undisclosed location. Morsi remains then in custody, as he has been since July the 3rd, when he was forced out of power by the army following major street protests. According to Catherine Ashton, and there's no reason to doubt her, Morsi is well. So Ashton, on behalf of the EU, has asked the interim Egyptian administration, basically the army, for his immediate release. His supporters are still demonstrating in the streets, demanding his return to power. All, of course, in the wake of the death of over 70 Morsi supporters killed during, during protests last week. Uh, 250 deaths since Morsi then was forced out of power. This, according to medical staff, some say the total could even be higher. So compromise and uh, reconciliation. They seem like far off dreams for Egyptians right now. With both sides, it seems, stuck in opposition. Is Egypt then at a dangerous stalemate? That is the subject of our debate. Gallagher Femic in Cairo now sets the scene. While the international community and notably the European Union's high representative, Catherine Ashton, is busy pressing ahead uh, with her efforts to help Egypt find a peaceful exit out of the bloody standoff, the supporters of the ousted Islamist President Mohamed Morsi are busy preparing for a million-man march set to take place this Tuesday evening. We will come out in every square, all of us. We will let our voice be heard by all in a peaceful way. Bear in mind that we have been repeatedly attacked by state security forces, by vandals, while the police watches on and does nothing. They attack us everywhere. Organizers of this Tuesday evening's pro Morsi rally say the protest will be dedicated to the memory of those who died in recent clashes with security forces. They've been killing us all, us and our children. They're trying to kill freedom. They know that once Egypt gets back its freedom, the Islamic agenda will prevail, and this will be good for the entire Muslim world. Given the determination of both sides to move forward with their diametrically opposed agendas, the fear is that this Tuesday evening's rally will see more bloodshed, which will draw Egypt even further away from a political compromise that could put an end to the standoff. Gallagher Fenwick setting the scene for us there in Cairo. Let's introduce now our guests here in the studio, starting with uh, Myra Daridan. Myra, thank you for being with us, an Egyptian author and researcher, a frequent visitor to us here at France Bancat. We always appreciate your views on your home country. Good to see you. On the other side of our studio, we have uh, Mohamed Salem, uh, one of our own journalists here at France Bancat. Mohamed works principally on the Arabic channel, though his English is perfect, as you will soon see, and a man who is passionate about Egypt, his home country. Thank you, sir, for spending mm -hmm. time to be with us. I know you're very busy at the moment. Uh, Gianni Kata is next to uh, Mohamed. Gianni is the Europe correspondent of Qatar Capital, a man with extensive experience, uh, not just of Egypt, but of the entire uh, Middle East, North Africa region. We're looking forward to your point of view as well on this uh, very, very pressing matter. We've got two guests joining us from afar, uh, distant but not uh, far from this debate, we hope. First by satellite in London is uh, Omar uh, Ashur. Omar is a senior lecturer at the Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies at the University of Exeter. So, Thank you for spending time to be with us. We're looking forward to getting your insights on this uh, situation and this subject. And by satellite from Cairo, Hamza Zoba, who's writer, journalist, and importantly, member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, Hamza, I'll put the first question to you as we've ended with you. Um, what would it take, do you think, to make the people who are going to demonstrate in Cairo and around Egypt this evening, what would it take to make them happy, to make them go home with some kind of optimism in their hearts? Uh, what makes our people happy is um, the return uh, of legitimacy, uh, including the uh, release and the reinstatement of uh, Mo Dr. Morsi as a president, uh, reactivate the constitution that has been approved by the majority of Egyptian people, and the third is the activation of Shura Council as the only lasting um, legislative uh, chamber uh, in uh, Egypt after uh, cancelling the parliament. The interim the government says that won't happen, here, sir. The, the, the interim government says uh, that I'm won't not happen. Sure it, 
Uh, I'm sorry? The interim government says that won't happen. Um, uh, if, I, uh, if I hear your question well, I think it should happen. Uh, the three demands of the legitimacy will take place soon or later. This is not uh, some kind of uh, imagination, but actually on the ground what happened, the determination of uh, pro morsi and pro legitimacy uh, demonstrators for one month now without uh, any discontinuity, uh, meaning and giving a good message that people here are still determined to uh, get uh, legitimacy back, uh, although what we have seen, also, also of the slaughters that took place in many uh, times, four times now we have Al Mansura slaughter, Al Manassa Rab al Adawiya slaughter. Ramses slaughter, Repub uh, Republican Guard slaughters. Over the then 200 uh, went victims for the uh, violence of the state security uh, forces and military forces. So what we uh, are expecting, and uh, the people are expecting that not less than the return of the legitimacy. OK, well, let's leave it for there. We'll bring you back in in a moment, uh, Hamza, and I will try to make sure my questions are very clear and very slowly put so you hear them first time. I apologize about that. Um, people in the studio now, I mean, 70 people dead last weekend. Myra, can I start with you? In terms of what's happening and the grievances of the Muslim Brotherhood, do you think they have a point? Any death, whatever death, whatever side, is unacceptable. 70 people dead, it's far too much, definitely. But let's not forget that if we are making a count, which is horrid, I mean, we're not counting in a balance how many corpses on one side and the other, but we forget to put into the balance the cops who die, who still die. Since, uh, since the toppling of Mr. Morsi, more cops have died, but nobody speaks about that. We forget to speak about the Shias who were slaughtered by a mob. Uh, in the name of what? In the name of Islam? In the name of what? It, it is definitely not my understanding of my religion. So uh, is it fair to die? No, it's not fair to die. But is it fair for the people on the streets to have an opinion? Yes, it is fair. I just want to remind the gentleman that in the first days of the 25th of January revolution, 800 Egyptians died but before the president actually left. So were we supposed to wait until people died more? Uh, I mean, it's a matter of choice of what do you do to stop slaughters? People um, quote, journalists quote, people like me quote the fact that uh, Mohamed Morsi was uh, democratically elected and he's been kicked out of power by the army and that amounts to a military coup. Um, can I turn to you, Gianni, and just ask what is your understanding of what a military coup is, and do you think a military coup has happened in Egypt? Well, this was actually a military coup. He was dem democratically elected, uh, President Morsi. And um, I am glad that Lady Ashton, uh, the chief diplomat of the European Union, Union and uh, Mr. Fabius, the Minister of, of uh, Foreign Affairs of, of France, uh, want to speak to Mr. Morsi because he's in jail. Uh, this, this was clearly a military coup. Uh, Mr. Morsi, uh, as far as I know, uh, wanted to dialogue for a moment. Uh, at the, at the last, in the last days, he wanted some sort of compromise because he knew the situation was getting very hot. And uh, uh, General uh, Al-Sisi didn't really want to di dialogue with him. And Al-Sisi was nominated by him. Uh, so I, I, I think this is a coup d'etat. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to go back, like, like Mr. Hamza said um, before me. I, I, don't, I don't think that he's going to be reinstated. But I think that uh, the, the only solution is some sort of political transition at this stage. OK, so some sort of transition. And obviously, that might be key to providing some kind of stability. Can I bring you in now, Mohamed? Because clearly when? the Arab Spring happened and when there was change in, in Egypt, you, people like you, people of your age group, um, I'm presuming you're around about between 25 and 35, um, were looking for something different, we're looking for some change, we're looking for some, something new in Egypt. Uh, that hasn't happened. <clears throat> exactly. And uh, talking and speaking about transition, a lot of people of my age, I think, uh, 
they believed that we would not have a proper transition. I mean, everything was was made in the in the bad order. I think we should have had a constitution first. But uh, as first as uh, Mubarak was toppled, the military council with the Muslim Brotherhood, they, I mean, what is being said, that they made a kind of deal to make the constitutional amendments and to go with the constitution of 71, which was then uh, operative at the time of Mubarak. And so we then had parliamentary election and then uh, presidential elections, although we didn't have any constitution, I mean an amended constitution. Morsi was elected without really knowing what would be his like uh, prerogatives. We didn't know what he would be accountable for. So the election was too soon? I think it's not that it was too soon. I think it was the bad order. We should have had the constitution first, a new one, as some are asking for these days. I mean, some young people, uh, and I think uh, the Tamarut campaign, they asked for a new constitution. They did not want an uh, amendment of a constitution that was made by mainly Islamists. I know that some uh, civil forces, I mean, or political factions were partners with them, but they withdrew. And then it kept on going, and then the constitution made uh, the, the, the beginning of the division of the Egyptian society, I think. Okay, I need to bring in uh, Omar Ashur from uh, the University of Exeter, the very respected Institute of uh, Arab and uh, Islamic Studies uh, over there. Uh, Omar, the, the situation perhaps in some people's eyes was that the election happened too soon, and the opposition essentially was too fragmented, which of course meant that the most organized group, the Muslim Brotherhood, was automatically elected, and that was the beginning of the problems. Would you agree with that? Uh, partly. The, the problem is uh, we have two issues here. One of them is the relationship between the or who makes the decision in Egypt. Is it the armed institutions of the state or the elected institution of the state? So this is one problem. The other problem is that when the transition occurred, uh, January 25th came with very uh, um, broad objectives. Dignity, well, that was the decision freedom, of the people, justice, wasn't it, Omar? That was, that was the people talking, saying they wanted change. And that, isn't that the most important yes, thing, the people yes. should be heard? Yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, and this is January 25th came with that. Uh, but the problem is the roadmaps were very conflicting. A part, as, as, as uh, you mentioned, wanted a constitution first. But behind that, there was a, the political struggle. By constitution first, some of the uh, figures that knew that they may not get a, a majority, uh, they wanted a constitution first to limit the, the competition, possibly ousting the uh, Islamist parties. So that was the, 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 the understanding of the other side. And then the Islamist parties, on the other hand, knew that they, they went to elections first they will win the elections. But the problem, it doesn't matter now. We've been through uh, five elections, uh, a, a constitutional referendum on a constitutional declaration, followed by a parliamentary elections for the lower house, followed by a parliamentary elections for the upper house, followed by a presidential elections, and followed by a constitutional referendum. In all of these five, the, there was consistent winners, and there were consistent losers. And the losers did not accept the loss. They fought back, but not in, a, in, in, in an electoral way, uh, via they came to power the, the, in a, in a non-democratic way. So now some of the winners are in jail and some of the losers are in power. And who empowered them? It's not the, the ballots, it's the bullets. And this, this brings us to the, the, to the core of the issue, which was there in Egypt since 1952, since the coup of, uh, of uh, 1952, which was basically uh, empowering the armed institutions over any other institution of the state, over the constitution, over the parliament, and over the political process. Regardless of how good the constitution, I believe that the constitution of 2012 was not a good constitution. It had a strong religious element in it. It, had, it empowered, actually, the army, even in the constitution. It gave them quite a few impunity uh, uh, and quite a few uh, almost independence within the, with it. So it was not a, a great constitution compared to all other Egyptian oh, constitutions. Mal, I need to pause you there it, for a second. Better. And bringing some of the guests here sure. in the studio. I'll be back to you very shortly. I'll, I'll be soon coming to Hamza Zoba, of course, in Cairo from the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, Gianni, you had a, a, something to add? Yes, I, I would like to say that I think the um, when Mubarak was overthrown in, uh, in the beginning of 2011, um, it, it was just uh, you needed a gradual transition there. Uh, Mubarak had been a pillar against fundamentalism for many years for European and American leaders, uh, for the West. And, uh, and, and, and but the, that fundamentalism is what people voted for, wasn't it? This, I mean, Morsi was voted in by the yes, Democratic exactly. majority. But that's why, if you had a gradual transition, the, the, the opposition parties would have had more time to prepare themselves for the elections. They didn't have any time. Of course, uh, the, the Brotherhood, they were ready, you know, and the other parties were not ready. And the same thing again 
uh, with the with the election of of, of Morsi. You know, you 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 needed more time uh, once once you overthrew him. You needed more time to overthrow this man who had been supported by the United States, and you needed time for for the opposition to organize again. You I'm, don't have I'm a, not a, a, an this idea of overthrowing someone can who's I, democratically elected. But I, I hear what you're saying, Omar. Yeah, can I can I just interfere to say how how why is it that we have two measures for things always two different measures? I mean, uh, if we take it that it was a coup and that, uh, the, that, that President Morsi should be reinstated, et cetera, et cetera, then why Morsi, why not Mubarak, actually? I mean, it was the same process. It was people in the streets who voted him out. Coup so, supported by the streets. That's, coup that's, that's supported the by the street. Coup supported by the street again, yeah. okay? Uh, second thing, the ballots, the ballots. It was, as, as Mohammed said, the ballots were made, the order of voting, the order, the process was completely false. Uh, so much so that people got fed up with voting vote after vote after vote, and they stopped going. They stopped voting. I mean, the Shura Council was voted in by 10% of the electorate. Uh, Mohammed That's Morsi was voted in by half of a half of the electorate. So now we are surprised to see 30 million in the street against Mr. Morsi. I'm not surprised. These are the 30 million that could not make up their minds between one Islamist and one army. You made a good so point. So they stayed at home. But Mubarak was never elected. I know. And, I know. and, and, and Morsi, was elected. Know. Morsi can, know. can speak about the transparency of the elections, but he was elected. But Morsi we, was theoretically really, speaking, Morsi I mean, was really elected. You have the percentage. You have you have people who of voted for Morsi him. Of course, Morsi was elected, and as and Mark he was said, overthrown. they won five it was elections. A it was a coup d'état. But if, the thing, the thing is, that you have to call it. You, you have to call it what it is. I would add a coup d'état. Popular. If you really insist on the word popular coup, coup d'état, I would say popular. No, but do, you, do, do you accept this? I mean, do you accept a coup d'état because you know the majority of the people voted for this, you know, this man? No, Egypt lived through a, a, a succession of coup d'états. I mean, uh, uh, Abdel Nasser came with a coup d'état. No, but one, one major thing uh, the is the only that difference is that Abdel Nasser came with a real coup d'état of the military. The people in the street were not aware that he was going to make a revolution. No, Whereas even, this time, it's the opposite. Even, even now, even now, the people Mira, went to the street we, we and forget, then the military intervened. We forget that. Uh, I mean, and the West uh, very often very forgets quickly. that Egypt is living a, a revolution. I mean, and it's not over. So we can talk about elections and all that, but. I mean, still, in the minds of people, there is this revolutionary legitimacy. We will talk more about that in part two, Mohammed. I need to stop you there. Sorry about that. Was Morsi okay. up to the job? Did he deserve to be pushed out of power? We'll answer, ask more questions like that and get answers from the Muslim Brotherhood in the second part of our debate. Stay with us for that. <laughs>